And every time I talk, I always start talking about God firstly and what your concept of God is. Now, I find that most people have a concept of God. Um, for example, that, uh, and you hear this in a lot of spiritualist literature today, that God is you, or you are God, or you are a part of God, or God is inside of you. Now, how many of you feel that way? That you are a part of God, God is a part of you? Right? Right? Most, most people. And how many of you feel like you are a child of God? Okay, so how can you be God and a child of God at the same time? Does that make sense to you? <laughs> well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to put forward the idea that you, in fact, are not God. That you and God are separate entities, separate souls, if you like. Now, God can enter you, or God's love in particular, a attribute of God can enter you, but God actually existed before you ever existed. God, in fact, existed before the universe even existed. So if that is the case, then God can't be the universe either, and God can't be you. Does that make sense? And so if you take the point of view that God existed before you existed, and God existed before the universe existed, that the universe actually came from somewhere, rather than the point of view that the universe is God, then it changes the, con the, the whole uh, discussion, really, when it comes to spiritualism. And what I'm going to do today is present the idea that God actually existed before the universe was created. Right, so let's start with God. God has attributes, masculine and feminine attributes. Would you agree with that? Okay. There's two prime, and I'll just write the term God. Who doesn't like the term God? Anybody doesn't like that term? Whenever you hear of God, do you feel like all religious all of a sudden? Who feels that? No. Well, if we don't like the term God, then it's just an emotion within you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Everything you don't like is just an emotion within you, yes? And in the end, all emotions within you that cause you pain need to be released if you want to feel blissful, right? So if you do have any anger issues with the term God, then more than likely it's related to religion and other things that have happened in your life. So I'm going to use the term God, but you could use the term source, creator, whatever you wish. God has two primary attributes. That's an interesting thing there. I think I'll just change that here. Divine love is one of the first primary attributes. As we'll learn, divine love, or God's love, is not the kind of love that most people think it is. And most people feel that the, the love that comes from the universe, the universal energy that can enter your form, and you can actually live off it as well. Sometimes it's called the chi energy or other forms of, uh, there's other words used for, the, for that energy. Well, that, that energy, is really not God's love that I'm talking about. It is a part of God's still, and we'll learn what part of God it is. But we're not talking about the divine love. I'm talking about God's personal desire and love for you as an individual. You follow me? Not, so God wanting and desiring a relationship with you. That's what I mean when I'm talking about divine love. There's another thing, important quality of God as well. And this is the quality that most people ignore in their developing spiritually. Divine truth. Do you know what I mean by divine truth? I mean the absolute truth. Who of you likes to feel that there's such a thing as an absolute truth? Some of you feel that there is. Most of them, I've found most people when I talk to them want to feel instead that there is actually degrees of truth or shades of grace. Right? And, and most people in fact want to feel that my truth is the absolute truth <laughs> and your truth isn't. Right? That's how it is most of the time. 
But what I'm saying is that God, being the creator of you, has the absolute truth of the universe. Absolutely everything that you could ever come to know, God already knows. Does that make sense as an idea? Yeah. All right. Now, any time that you are seeking to progress or develop spiritually, what you are doing is you're going to be learning a combination of these two things primarily. In other words, you're going to be either developing, you will be developing love, but you will also need to develop in truth as well. If you want to get closer to God, closer to bliss, what you will need to do is you will need to actually develop in truth as well as love. And that's why the truth sets you free. Does that make sense? Uh, notice, notice it was never said that love sets you free. Why is that? Well, doesn't that demonstrate the importance of absolute truth or truth? Because many people, you look at many people today, many people are in a condition where there's very, very little love in themselves. Aren't they? And they reflect very little love to anybody around them. Now, what is going to help them move from that condition? Isn't it only the truth? So, in the end, truth is what helps you move from a condition, from one condition to another. Does that make sense? Not anything else other, usually, than truth. Now, as you learn truth, you also generally grow in love. And we'll talk more about how that happens as we go.